In this episode, my friends, I'm going to be revealing two tents, the large size Tetra along with the small size Tetra. Both of these are from One Tigris. I'm finally done with all of my testing and I'm ready to share with you all my pros and cons for each of these tents. Which one would I personally recommend? The large size or the small size? Find out in this episode. By the way, my name is Luke. This is the Outdoor Gear Review. Let's get started. As you all can see behind me here, I've set up both of the tents, the larger version and also the smaller version. While these tents are very similar, there are some important differences. The larger version is referred to as the 160. The smaller version is the 130. The biggest differences between these two tents is that the large version has an integrated tent inner. The inner is connected to the tent. It cannot be removed. It features bug mesh, a floor, whereas the small version does not have that feature. So you can look at the larger version, the 160, as a tent. The smaller version, more as a tarp. Also, the larger version of this tent includes a pole. The smaller version does not. So you will have to supply your own for the setup process. Because these tents have such similar features, I'm going to be reviewing them both in this episode. As we begin going into the reviews here, I wanna state this. I have numerous episodes concerning these tents. I have a preview for each tent that goes over all of the features, which I may not touch upon in this episode. In this episode, I'm focusing primarily on the review. I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of these tents and discussing with you all my experiences while using these tents over the last couple of months. Additionally, I have overnight adventures with these tents and I also have test night episodes if you're interested in seeing the rain performance of these shelters. If you don't have time to spare, that's okay. In this episode, I will be discussing all of the main points for you to consider before you go out and purchase one of these tents. Continuing to talk about the interesting features of these tents, we have to talk about the doors because they're pretty interesting. They have multiple functions. Check this out. As you can see here, both of these setups are drastically different and you could do each one of these setups with each tent and more. With the small version, I have the door completely opened up and the door is stowed. With the large version, I've made a porch so you could sit under this, get some protection and enjoy your trip. With the porch setup that you see on the large size, you could set it up this way, you could set it up with two poles. You can also keep one side closed, the other side open and of course variations of this. There's plenty of ways that you could use this porch setup. Now I'll talk about this in more detail in just a minute. This is not perfect. As you all can see here, you do have these open sides. So this is going to protect you from some rain, but it has to be pretty light. More than anything, the porch is to protect you from sunlight because as is, it's not very storm proof. Taking a look on the inside of the small version, you can see that this tent features a snow skirt. And when you go to the back, you can see that large vent. That vent can be completely opened and dropped if you want tons and tons of airflow. With the large Tetra, there is no snow skirt, but you can see the tent inner there. With this inner, it has three zippers going up and to the sides. Then when you get into the inside here, you can see that storm flap. It too can be lowered if you want to experience full airflow. The company claims this is a two person tent, but I will disagree and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Now my friends, let's talk about the similarities between these two tents. First off, as you can see, these are square shaped TP tents. You have one pole that goes in the center and you stake it out around the perimeter in the shape of a square. Because these are square shaped TP tents, the setup process for both of these is exceptionally easy. There's nothing to it. Oftentimes when it comes to TP tents, Setting them up can be a chore because you need to make sure that you get the stakeout points correct. Otherwise, it'll be somewhat lopsided. Maybe the tent is stretched too far in this corner or this side. It could be a little bit wonky. Again, going back to the square shape of these, you really can't mess it up. You stake it out, you pull it tight, you put the pole in, you make some minor adjustments and you're good to go. It's super fast, super quick. So again, even though these tents are different sizes, they feature the same design. Both tents feature multiple vents. You have two at the top and one large vent at the very back. The large vent at the back, which also has a protective flap on the inside of the tent, is called the 3D condensation system. You can see here that the backside of the tent is sloped and you have this mesh. That is that vent. And then again, on the inside, you have this protective flap. 
This tent is elevated in the back so that condensation on the inside of the tent runs down and exits the tent. At the same time, you get amazing airflow from that vent, which helps with reducing condensation. At the same time, that protective flap keeps out rain, but it does not keep out the wind. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Before moving on to the pros and cons, let's stop there and let's go over some stats real quick. The color of these tents is urban gray, and the materials are the same for both. You're looking at a 20D silicone and PU coated nylon. Both tents have YKK zippers. The waterproof rating for both tents is exactly the same, 3000 millimeters. For the large version, you have an aluminum pole. When it comes to the pack sizes, the small version is 15.7 inches by 5.9 inches. With the large tent, that's 17.3 by 6.3. When it comes to the setup dimensions, with the small version, it is 4.3 feet tall. It is 7.2 feet deep and 7.5 feet wide. With the tall version, five feet, three inches tall. It is 7.2 feet deep and 7.8 feet wide. When it comes to the weights, the small version is 2.4 pounds. The large version is four pounds. The cost of the small version is $130. The large version is 180. Now let's talk about what's included with each of the tents. With the small version, you get the tent, the stuff sack. The company says 12 tent stakes and four guy lines. The thing is this, the tent came with 14 tent stakes. With the large version, you get the tent, the stuff sack. The company says 12 tent stakes, but you actually get 14 four guy lines, and you receive the aluminum setup pole. Now, my friends, let's begin with the pros and cons that I have concerning these tents. So first off, pro number one is quality. The overall quality of these tents is top notch. I'm very, very impressed, especially for the low price. There's no loose threads. The seam tape is perfect. There's no issues at all that I've seen with these two tents. Next, both are exceptionally easy to set up. I mentioned this previously. All you have to do is lay it out, stake the corners in the shape of a square, insert a pole, make some adjustments and you're good to go. Setting up both of these tents is very, very easy. Next, we have to talk about price in more detail. $130, $180, you cannot beat those prices for these shelters. Again, this is more of a tent, this is more of a tarp. Which one do you prefer? What's so impressive about the pricing here is that you're getting premium materials. Seal nylon for both tents, YKK zippers, you get the aluminum pole with the large version, if these tents were made by a company here in the United States, they would cost four or five times this amount. They've made these tents with excellent designs, excellent materials, and the prices have been kept low. That really does impress me. Next, everyone, both tents offer quite a bit of space, of course, with the larger version offering more. With the smaller version here, you can get two cots inside of this. There's that much space. This is going to be a palace for one person, and the same is true with the large version. Now we might as well talk about that. The company claims this is a two person tent, but in truth, it's only one. And this is the reason why, and this is somewhat of a con. These tents are made with seal nylon. And what does seal nylon do? It stretches. When you set this tent up, you get inside of that inner tent. As the night goes on, that material is going to begin to sag. It simply is a characteristic of seal nylon. So when you wake up in the morning, this tent will have sagged quite a bit, making this a one person tent. And unfortunately, Here's another con. There's no guy lines on the back side of this tent to pull that fabric away. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. So in the end, the smaller version is actually a two person where the larger version is actually a single person tent. It should be mentioned that both tents are going to be an excellent option for larger individuals, taller individuals. Both tents are fairly lightweight considering the size of these shelters. Also, their pack sizes are very small. Next everyone, both shelters can be set up in numerous ways. You can use poles, you can use sticks. If there's a branch overhead, you can tie them off and hang them that way. Again, there's multiple ways that these can be set up and utilized. Next, I have to say, I like the colors of these tents. The company calls this urban gray. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. You could argue that there's some blue in there, and I would agree. It's like a bluish gray color, in my opinion. They look good. Both tents have proved themselves to be 100% waterproof. I've had no issues when it comes to water ingressing inside of these tents, no matter how bad the conditions have been. And I've used these tents in some rather nasty conditions. A little bit of snow, some ice, tons of rain. I've had no issues with these tents. No rain has gone underneath the storm flap and gone through the zippers. I've had no rain being blown through the vents and that includes the two at the top and that applies for the large vent at the back. Because of the 3D condensation system, ventilation is top notch. Again, you have the two vents at the top, you have the large vents at the back. Because of the storm flap and the way that it's angled, tons of air comes through those vents. It's blown straight up the walls of the tent and that reduces condensation. That's another pro. Condensation is well controlled inside of these tents, even though they are single walled. You will get some condensation, 
but it's not that big of a deal. Next, my friends, I absolutely love the porch setup that you can do with these tents. This offers quite a bit of protection, namely from sunlight, but that is important, just as important as protection from the rain. Again, these panels can be altered, so you can zip up one side, leave the other side open. There's quite a bit of versatility here. I have more to say about the porch setup, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Next, the storage bags for these tents are excellent. It's of a burrito style design, and you'll have no problem fitting both tents inside of these bags. They're of a good size. The last pro that I have deals with the larger version and the tent inner. It works very well. You have the bathtub floor, you have the bug proof mesh. It does exactly what you would want it to do. That takes us over to the cons, and the first con, we might as well talk about this porch because, as I alluded to earlier, you have holes here one on each side. If you're underneath this and it begins to rain, rain will make it down onto the ground around you. Again, the porch is not stormproof. I reached out to one tigress and I asked them if they can come up with panels that could be zipped in to fill in those gaps. And they said that is something that they will look at. But as is, it's imperfect and it's not quite as practical as you would expect. Again, it's great for blocking sunlight, but that's about it. Because of that, if you want to use these tents with the porch set up and you want to use them in rain, you will need some sort of tarp to go over the top, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, if you have a tarp, it gives you even more living space where you can utilize that space and stay dry. So let's say that you're out for a trip, it's raining outside, you can have this entire area to stay dry. You can have chairs, a table, you can cook. It's pretty nice. The next con that I have deals with the smaller version. No pole is included, which I think is unfortunate. A big con for this tent deals with the fact that there's no guideline points on the back side of these tents, which absolutely blows my mind. I do not get it. What these tents offer are four guideline placements at the front of the tent, not at the back of the tent. It makes no sense at all, everyone. When you take these tents out more times than not, you're going to set these up with the wind hitting the back side of the tent. That way you can sit up front and you could be protected, right? Because there's no guy line placements on the back side, the tent is weak in that area. And again, this makes no sense. In the summertime, you may want airflow going to the front and that's fine. If that's the case, you have the guy line points to anchor the tent with. But as it gets cooler, you would want the wind hitting the back side of the tent. And because there's no guy line points, you have to be very, very careful. This is not a tent that I would recommend for very strong, stormy, windy conditions because of that fact. This is something that one tigress needs to address. With future versions of this tent, there needs to be guy line points at the back. I have no idea what one tigress was thinking here. This makes no sense at all. And in my opinion, is a major oversight. Also everyone, because there's no guy line points on the larger version of the tent, when you're inside of that inner, the fabric sagging in, there's no way to pull that material out. Again, this is just a big oversight. The company claims it's a two person tent, but because there's no guy line points, it's actually a one person. And that's a huge shame because there is enough room inside of there for two people. But after a few hours, that material would be laying on them both. That makes no sense. This is something that one tigress needs to address. An additional con that I have for these tents deals with the storm flap that's on the inside of the tent. Yes, it does angle airflow up against the walls and that helps with condensation, but there will be times when you're using this tent where you wanna close that vent completely because you don't want cold air rushing inside of your shelter. Unfortunately, there's no way to seal up those vents. And this is something that one tigress needs to address. On really cold nights, when it's windy outside, you will want to seal that tent up and hold in as much heat as possible, even though condensation is going to form. In the end, it's all about control. You want to be able to control the dynamics taking place inside of the tent. And because of that vent, because you can't really close it, you can't do that. That's a shame and it's also a problem. Next, my friends, let's talk about these tent stakes. As I mentioned before in previous episodes, the corded pools that go on these tent stakes, the cord itself is not of a good quality for this type of knot. So what happens? The knots come undone. In my first trip out with the small version, I noticed this, I talked about it in my adventure, the next day, when it comes time to break down the tent, I wasn't paying attention. I go down, grab this cord, it rips off the tent stake, and I end up taking a big chunk out of my finger from one of the sharp edges here. I was quite pissed off, to be honest with you. Not so much with this, because it's something that I noticed. I was more frustrated with myself, and I wasn't paying attention, because I knew it was going to happen. I actually called it out the day before. After that episode went up, one tigress did contact me, and they stated that they are going to solve this issue. Until they solve that issue, this is what you can do to solve this problem. Basically, you could take the pull, you can get the knot nice and tight, and then you could drop some super glue on this, or you can even use seam grip. Seam grip will add a sort of rubbery texture to it. I like that myself, but seam grip is not going to last as long as super glue. Or you could replace the cordage and go with something better. All of those options will work. Those, my friends, are the pros and cons that I have for the Tetra tents. 
Now let's talk about which one I personally prefer. That would be the large version. In my opinion, that makes more sense. As I mentioned before, this is more of a tent, whereas this is just a tarp, a glorified tarp. Both are excellent shelters, but the large version with the tent inner, that's something that I can use year round. I can use it in the winter time, just as I can use it in the summertime. With the smaller version, because there's no tent inner, this is something that I wouldn't use in the summer unless I added some sort of tent inner to it. Also, it should be mentioned that I appreciate the larger size of the larger version. It's a little bit more comfortable to get in and out of because of the larger size. In the end, everyone, I absolutely love these tents. One Tigress has done an excellent job with these. While they're not perfect, they're very, very close. With the next iteration of these, the next version, I think they're going to have some of the best tents out on the market. The larger size, it just does everything right, with the exception of the lack of guy lines at the back and also the vent that can't be fully closed. If they can solve those issues while also providing some sort of panel for these gaps, they will have tents that other companies simply cannot match not only in terms of quality, but the higher end materials, storm worthiness, and also features. The larger Tetra tent happens to be the best tent that I used in 2022. And I'm interested to see what companies in 2023 will beat this. What products out there will beat this tent? I do wanna say this, One Tigress, good job. Like really good work. This is a company where I have to be honest, I've not liked every single one of their products. I've had issues when it comes to their tents, but One Tigress is one of those companies where they actually listen to the feedback of their users and they improve their products. Unfortunately, they don't always take defective products off of the market. The Cosmito is an example. The original Cosmito tent continued to be offered even after I discovered the manufacturing defect, the flaw in the design that led to the tent leaking every single time. I'm not sure why the company didn't take it off the market. All they did was just add a disclaimer, a small disclaimer on their site that says, hey, don't use this in heavy rain. That's not acceptable in my book. In my opinion, they should have taken that product off of the market, took it on the chin, and moved on. Now, I will say this. They recently brought out a new version of that tent that supposedly solves all of the issues, and supposedly they listen to the feedback of the community. We shall see if that's true. And with that, everyone, I am done. Comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about the Tetra tents? Do you see any sort of issues, any sort of negatives that I may have missed? For myself, I think these tents are almost perfect. Almost is the key word. Excellent quality, great materials, super low price, good sizes, very functional, interesting features. Win, 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 win. There's just a few things holding these tents back from greatness. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment down below. For this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, that is it. Hit the like button before you go. It does help the channel. If you want to support a channel that's agenda-free, a channel that's not selling products, a channel that's not in bed with these companies. So if you want to support a channel like that, you can do so. Patreon, YouTube, it is appreciated. You could join the Wolf Pack. Everyone, take care, be well, strength and honor. Bye for now.